Hello friends, Dan Nelson here with another painting video. If you've seen any of my other videos, that you know that I typically take three or four hours of painting work and reduce it down to two or three minutes of video using lots of fast motion, stop action, and other video tricks. But a number of you have asked me to do a video where I don't do any fast motion. You actually want to see how I paint the whole thing. So ladies and gentlemen, not for the faint of heart, put on your seat belts and buckle down, get a bowl of popcorn and a glass of iced tea or something and watch me paint for an hour and 45 minutes. You see me here doing my typical acrylic glaze or even acrylic splash that's out of the tube acrylic with a lot of medium added to it. Not slow dry because I want this to dry quickly. Now I'm actually painting with a rag. That's not called erasing, ladies and gentlemen. That's called painting with a rag. It's perfectly legal as long as you don't get grumpy. And I'm certainly not grumpy at this stage of the process. I'm working on a 30 by 40 inch canvas and I'm going to be doing a painting of downtown Raleigh. I'm calling it either Capitol Monument or Capitol Confederate because the monument you see there is labeled to our Confederate dead. For those of you who really don't want to watch me do the whole thing, I'm going to give it all to you right now in quick order. Layer number one, the reds that you saw me doing. Layer two, some blue. Layer three, purples and a few dark areas. Layer four, some white highlights. Layer five, some outline done with reddish and purple paints. Layer six, local color and a few more dark spots. And there we have it, the finished painting. There's the original photograph again and the finished painting there. <laughs> you don't have to watch this video at all, but I hope some of you will. I hope you'll find it entertaining and informative. Here I am then working on the second layer. That's a little bit of phthalo blue and ultramarine blue mixed in with about 80 or 90 percent medium. My favorite medium is GAC 100 and sometimes I use a Winsor Newton gloss varnish, medium and varnish. Either one will work fine. Just remember, it's about 90% medium and 10% paint, because I want these to be nice and clear and transparent. At every stage of the process, I'm trying to keep lots of energy in the painting, uh, and lots of energy in my brush strokes. Uh, skipped a little bit there of, again, painting with a rag, blending some things in. And there I am working in real time. So yes, sometimes I really do get going with those brushes. I believe that's near the end of layer number two. Let me show you what that layer is going to look like when I'm all finished. There we go. And now ready to move on to the third layer. Some darker areas in purple. You'll see me occasionally glancing over to my right, like I did right there. I'm looking at the computer, a computer monitor that's sitting at the top of my tabaret, my table with all my paints sitting on it. And with each layer of the painting process, I'm sure this makes sense to you, I'm getting a little bit more representational, just a little bit more accurate in my rendering. Sometimes people will come up to me when I'm out on the street painting and later in the, in the painting process and they'll say, did you start out by drawing? <laughs> and I'm sorry, I say that with a southern accent because usually I'm in the south when I paint. <laughs> and uh, it's kind of funny because as you can see, I, I don't start out drawing at all. I start out quite the opposite of drawing. I start out making a great big mess. In fact, painting with two hands. I'll, I'll, I'll mention the two-handed thing several times probably throughout this video. I started painting with two hands about eight or nine years ago. I should have written it in my diary, but I didn't think it was a big deal at the time. Partly because I read that Leonardo da Vinci painted with two hands, and I thought, hey, if it was good for Leo, it might be good for me. It also made me think, that, hey, what if I get really old and I have a stroke or I get arthritis and I can't use my right hand? What am I going to do then? So it's also a little bit of safeguard, but the real reason I paint with two hands is because my brain feels different. I'm sure a neuroscience test would say maybe I'm painting out of the right side of my brain. Sounds good anyway. But it really does feel feel different. My right hand is so trained to do exactly what I tell it that it's I get over controlled when I use just my right hand. So I, I force myself to keep on using my left hand most of the time. 
I'm working on what layer number are you counting? Layer number one, two, three, I think, at this stage of the process. Getting in some darks, there it is. Yep, third layer purples because they're dark, and then some very dark blobs where I think cars are gonna go. Now I'm coming back with opaque white. I hope you understand that opaque white is a redundancy. You don't have to say opaque and white. All white is opaque and opacity has elements of white in it. That's what makes it opaque. Anyway, I'm again looking at the photograph, guessing where my shapes are going to go. Hey, let me give you this terminology. A lot of painters, a lot of teachers, they say you begin an oil painting by blocking in, right? If you've looked at, if you've taken any other classes, if you've looked at some other videos, then you're familiar with that term, blocking in a painting. Well, I don't like that concept. The reason is because the word blocking has the connotation, I'm being kind of funny here, has the connotation of a block. And what is a block? A block is a square thing with hard edges. And sure enough, people that block in their paintings do square shapes with hard edges. And that's just not a good way to start a painting in my book. So I just change a few letters and I call what I do blobbing in a painting. Got it? Don't block. Blob. It's far superior to blocking in a painting. Why? First of all, it doesn't lock you in. It's a lot easier to change your mind. It's a lot easier to move things around if you do blobs instead of blocks. There's layer five. Let me stop and listen to me talk. So at this point in the painting process, I have a decision to make. And sometimes I go one way and sometimes I go the other. The decision is, should I continue in acrylics doing more and more details? If I do that, the final drawing is likely to be a little bit more detailed and perhaps a little bit more accurate. The downside of doing that, however, is that if I continue to do layers of, of acrylic, I tend to lose some of this dynamic energy. The, the intense color, the, the strokes like that and that. You see those, those strokes? All of the, it's very energetic right now. All the strokes that are on the canvas were done, as you saw, fast in a spirit of joie de vie, enthusiasm, and so on and so forth. Uh, and that's what I like. So it's kind of a toss-up. I can go either way. I think because I like the way this is looking right now and I don't want to lose that energy, I'm going to go straight to oils. Okay? Thanks for watching. So this is my oil painting palette and this is a pile of Liquin, actually Liquin Light Gel in this case. And I'm going to do a glaze Several glazes would be more the term over my entire canvas using different colors, starting out with a warm orange yellow. People often ask me why I do oil on top of acrylic, and of course, I don't know which way to answer that question. Do you want me to answer uh, why do I do acrylics under oil? That's easy because you can do layers of acrylic and they dry really fast. Or do you want me to answer, uh, why do I switch to oil? Well, that's easy too. In fact, every time I do this stage of the painting right here, where I do my first oil glaze, there's some part, a little child, the little child artist in me, in me goes, Whoo, oh boy, this is nice. I like this now. Now I realize why I like oil paint so much. Because even though I've been doing layers of transparent acrylic, this first layer of transparent oil just, it's so sweet. It's so beautiful. It, it has a different property than, than, the, than the acrylic glazes had. It's, man, I hate to use bad language, but it's pretty. <laughs> That's my bad language. It's just so darn pretty. <laughs> and uh, like I said, every time I do this stage, I just my soul goes, whew, that's better.